We live in an age of terrible cynicism. Too many people believe that all politicians are corrupt and all media outlets exaggerate or lie. We have two guests for you now, one from politics, the other from media, whose job it is to investigate complaints about the media and seek redress if the media get it wrong. And with that, we welcome Senator Francis Lankin and John Fraser, who are the chair and president and CEO, respectively, of the National News Media Council. Before I welcome you, John, Senator Lankin, can you believe that? Chancellor Pakin, yes. <laughs> no, 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 but Senator Lankin. It's, uh, it's, it's amazing. You're a former jail guard, and look where you are now. Oh, my gosh. You, went, <laughs> you forgot the union negotiator part, too. And all that, too. People normally put that in. It's Con amazing. It's an incredible honor. Yeah. Um, it's a time of need for great change in the Senate, and I'm happy to be there and try and be part of that. So. Fantastic. Yeah. Let, uh, so let me ask you, given that you're, you, you were once a politician and now, funnily enough, back in politics, generally speaking, are we well served by the legacy media of this country? Generally speaking, um, I'm, I'm going to narrow it to our view with questions of ethics, journalistic standards. Yeah, um, I, and I would say generally, yes, we are uh, very well served. Is there a problem in terms of the changing media and the competition with what's going on on digital and quick turnaround times and less and less people to do, you know, really good basic investigative journalism and all of those things are pressures. And there are pressures, I think, that feed into public cynicism about how they see news reported. But on the questions of, of basic journalistic standards and ethics, our legacy media are still doing a good job. Did you feel that way when you were cabinet minister 25 years ago? Oh, they always got it wrong when it was about... No, That's what no, I thought. No, <laughs> I, I, I think that uh, in terms of ethics, yeah, uh, I, I, I still... I, th I thought that then, and I still think that now. I'm going to ask you the same question, but before doing so, I am going to put a bit of your background on the record, because you have done damn near everything in journalism, John Fraser. Copy boy for the old Toronto telly, editor of Saturday Night Magazine, China correspondent, London correspondent, columnist, Glo Ottawa bureau chief, Globe and Mail. You've done a lot of stuff, so you've seen a lot of stuff, and I ask you the same question. How well served are we by legacy media in the country today? Can I just, before that, say what Her Majesty said to uh, Justin Trudeau when he toasted her long career. Thanks for making me seem so old. <laughs> um, Experienced, not yeah, old. Yeah, yeah, Experienced. Yeah. That's, great. That's what he said, yeah. too. Um, I, well, I agree with what Francis said, but I have, a, I have clearly a different perspective as a practitioner. And uh, to me, um, the extraordinary thing about the legacy media, it's hard for me even to say that, mm. being maybe a legacy relic, um, the, the extraordinary thing is how good they are, actually. And, and here we are, Francis, uh, as the chair of, of, of the council, and myself as the day-to-day -day administrator, mostly hearing complaints. Mm. Um, and yet what, what amazes me is, despite all of the turmoil, transition, that these newspapers have been going through, the closures, the, uh, sometimes the depression, there is still good investigative journalism. There's still responsible journalism. The fun for us, actually, is the challenge of the digital media. This is the Wild West. Hold off on journalism. that. I'm going to okay. get to the digital. But the legacy media, to me, is showing remarkable resilience um, and courage and occasional um, lapses, but then they always did. Let's, let's find out, John, first of all, what you guys do, because you've got a new mission. You sort of have subsumed a lot of the former provincial press councils, and now you are the National News Media Council. So what is your purpose? I'm going to actually... That you Francis want to tell you what she did, because she is the motor that drove this amalgamation of the press councils, and it's a it's a pretty impressive story, actually. Well, Fire away. A little too much credit uh, to me, but uh, the newspapers themselves uh, felt that the press council, which is a a voluntary self-regulatory mechanism that was established back in the early 70s and you know over the years across the country, came originally. Uh, I shouldn't say originally, but one of the major milestones was uh, a 1969 Senate report on mass media that made a recommendation for press councils to have a broader royal role than they actually do. But the role was to uh, be a, uh, a protector of uh, and promoter of freedom of speech, but also to be a protector and promoter of the public's right to challenge newspapers in terms of their journalistic standards and whether or not they're meeting their own industry standards and journalistic ethics. So take us through that. Yeah. If somebody sees something in the, any of the newspapers that are participants of this council yes. uh, and they think, this is wrong, this is malicious, I want to complain, yes. what do they do? So the first thing they do is complain to the newspaper themselves mm -hmm. and uh, attempt through that communication to get a resolve to their complaint. 
um, sometimes that works very well. And more and more with newspapers, with public editors, that we see that they've put in place. That's their job to explore these things, deal with other editors and, and, and journalists, and see if they can resolve these things. Uh, sometimes they, they don't resolve them. And then the person in, can be invited to complain to us. We'll take a look at it. We will uh, examine whether or not we think, based on precedence, there is an issue here. We look at the paper's own standards. Was there a violation of their own standards? We look at general industry standards. We look at Supreme Court decisions that have you know, been landmark in terms of setting out um, definitions of things like public interest and, uh, and what the expectations are on the, uh, the industry. And uh, we make a recommendation, our staff make a recommendation to us as a council as to whether or not they think there uh, is a, a real complaint here or whether it should be dismissed. If the council then decides, if they think there's a complaint there, it may well go to a hearing in which the complainant and the newspapers are invited to participate. That's what I want to find out, John. Yeah. Once, once it has been decided that your council wants to investigate a complaint, is the newspaper or somebody on the newspaper, editor, publisher, whatever, obliged to submit themselves to your investigation? But yes, if they're, if they're members, they're, they're part of the process. And they can either come to the hearings, but they certainly get heard at the hearings on the other side. Um, the council is made up of uh, a certain number, almost an odd number, of, of, of uh, appointed council members. There has to be a majority of public members and a minority of industry members. And if, if someone is on the council who is actively involved in one of the publications, they simply recuse themselves. Um, but the, the interesting thing about the council, for my purposes, having been a professional journalist, we sort of looked like the Law Society or the Medical Association, except we, as you know, you've got this lovely job here. I, I had a job in newspapers, but there was no professional organization that's, that put me through our paces any more than they did you. Mm. We're there because of our talents and whatever. So it's not quite the same as lawyers being hauled before uh, the Law Society for, no, I for hear breach. You. But if, if you have discovered... But there are standards. Yeah, and if you find that those standards have been breached, what kind of punishment can you mete out? Well, we... We have a decision made by the council, and that decision has to be published in, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, newspaper, or the publication. And if it's embarrassing to the newspaper, tough they, luck. Yeah, tough I mean, luck. they've agreed they to that. A lot of, they agreed to that up front by being, becoming members. A lot of um, you know, people look at this and say, well, there's no teeth there. You, know, you can't uh, really penalize, you can't fine, you can't do any of those sorts of things. And I think we have to remember that this is a system that is a voluntary self-regulatory system. It's been set up mm -hmm. by the industry. Interestingly enough, in the UK, things ran such a muck, you know, in uh, in the industry with the tabloid scandals and uh, with phone the, you hacking, know, phone all hacking and all yeah. of that, that you know, it led to the government establishing a commission, an Levinson commission, mm -hmm. and coming out of that were recommendations about a legislated regulatory body and fines and all those sorts of things. What do you think of that approach? Well, it's an anathema to uh, to the media and to free you know free speech and to uh, the protection of that. So. I guess what I have to say is the media better do a good job through this voluntary process or that's, or, coming. Or or that's, that's coming. coming, you know, <laughs> and, and we will all, if we saw something like what went on in England, go on here, and that fortunately hasn't happened here. Um, but if we saw that, I think there would be a lot of us that would then take that next step and say, and, well, we've got to do something about it. Steve, you noticed who's been using the, the British one recently? Who? The Queen. Ah. The headline, yeah. Queen Supports Brexit. They've taken that headline hmm. to Ipso and said, she doesn't. Will you please rule on it? We're waiting for the ruling. Interesting. Well, let's do an example. The very best sorts use, use press councils. Yeah. We'll do an example closer to, uh, closer to home here. This is Arun Chauhan versus the Toronto Star. Uh, Arun had a complaint with the Star, and let's bring that up. Yeah, here's the example. Arun Chauhan alleged the Toronto Star maligned the Indian civil service examinations by using a misleading photo to illustrate a story about the extreme level of difficulty of exams required to join India civil service. The photo depicted cheating in an unrelated high school exam setting. The article itself did not reference cheating in any connection to the civil service exam process. The star said it had no authorized access to a photo illustrating the civil service exam story and used another photo illustratively with an explanatory caption. Who wants to take this on? What was wrong with what the star did? Well, I have to mm -hmm. let Francis because it wasn't 
the National News Media Council that dealt with this. At this the Ontario you inherited Press this Council. decision, I guess. I, I did. I inherited yeah. all sorts of things, but I'm going to let well, Francis. You, you okay. might you might have an opinion. You can chime in. Yeah. You know what was wrong is that uh, the picture, and I, re I recall it very well. It showed people scaling a wall and handing answers in, um, and it certainly left the impression. Uh, that this was related directly to the story about people passing the exam to become uh, civil servants or members of the public but service it wasn't. Uh, profession, but it wasn't. Huh. But it left that impression clearly, and that would, you know, lead you to wonder about the professionalism of a country's public service. It leads to all sorts of uh, considerations and concerns about corruption, et cetera, et cetera, with the government, yeah. and it is, um, in one broad brush maligning many many respectful people who do good work so, so what was the punishment well they had to uh, they had to publish the decision that we we wrote and uh, I, I think in that case I, I don't recall but I think they actually made an apology as well hmm. and is that was everybody satisfied with the conclusion of that yes they were yes okay that um, was a relatively simple one that yeah. relatively simple yeah. case and, and, and there's great variety in the mm -hmm. kinds of complaints that come before the council one of the interesting things to consider about an organization like ours is we're kind of occupying an area between the letters to the editor and the libel office. Hmm. And one of, the, one of the services we provide both the public and, and the, 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 the media is, is um, um, the services of no lawyers. Hmm. I, I cost mean, free. Cost, cost free on both sides. Yeah. Hmm. It's not, and, and, and actually, if a complainant, if we, if we take on a complaint, a complainant that has to actually agree not to take the finding if it comes out in his or her favor to, to, to their favorite libel lawyer. That, it con that concludes the process. So you can see certainly why a newspaper might want to have a, a dispute settled that way because the costs of um, litigation are horrendous yeah, these through the days. Roof. But for many people in the public, um, they wouldn't pursue something if it involved going to the court. So yeah. it is a place for, for their... Uh, com complaints to be aired, and in in the case where we find in favor of the complainant for, um, you know, th their their day in the media to mm. proclaim that they were right about their their complaint and their feelings, and if their complaint is dismissed, often it engages, um, you know, the complainant in a discussion with us about the reasons, and there's an education around the fundamental principles of, principles of journalism and ethics and those sorts of things. So it, it plays two roles. I do uh, want to pick up on your digital comment from earlier sure, because sure. I presume that you're not the press council anymore but the news media council we because, because we're in a brave new world when it comes to digital and online and all of that. So how do you handle the, um, you know, online have, are they signing up to your council? Do they care about your council? It's some the wild, are, wild west some are. There. Um, the, they, they don't understand us. Some of them are resisting me, um, but I'm irresistible, and, and I'm going to be <laughs> on their case. And interesting things are happening. It is the Wild West out there, mm -hmm. um, but you're now getting, say, uh, a group like Vice, who have now been hauled before the RCMP, that they're, they're having grown-up journalistic problems. They, they actually need allies and friends. So uh, we, we, we defend. We don't just take in corrections. We also help the public understand that columnists can actually have opinions. Um, but, um, but they don't play by the same rules online as legacy media No, No, but, 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 but they're starting, starting to see the consequences of not playing hmm. because, because the laws out there are actually still affecting the digital media. So we have, uh, we have Canada Land, for instance, which uh, gets up the noses of a lot of journalists. But Jesse it's Brown? signed on. Yeah, it's signed on. J Jesse signed on? Yeah. Wait a second. I heard you with Jesse. Yeah. You said for a dollar a year we'll take you. Yeah. So he paid the dollar? He has. And he's in? He's in. And he'll be, be paying more next year. Yeah, we had a little <laughs> chat about that dollar a year. I, th I, I think that was a, um, an impromptu <laughs> challenge, was. and he took it on. Yeah. So he took it up. Yeah. That's there a one-off thing. Please. But you know, yeah. what, what, just a point of interest and mm -hmm. connection, the, in the, Ontario, the old Ontario Press Council, the very first um, online media that came on was uh, Ontario Politics. One um, Susanna Kelly, who oh, yeah. used to be a producer Indeed here she did. For, for many of years, so I, I think uh, and she's that, in that too. was interesting. She's into yeah. We have Queens Park today, for example, which is having trouble getting access to the to the press gallery here, and um, we think they're legitimate. They're abiding by the rules that we would consider make them journalists. So they haven't convinced the press gallery yet. Apparently. They haven't yet, yeah. but um, which is a bit the, odd. But there you go. But they're they're working on that. This is a, a transitional stage, as you're aware. This you know it. Uh, you're going to forgive this, but here we go. A lot of people think, I presume, that you're an anachronism today. That in the age of Wild Wild West, where you can't control you know, anything at all, 
and where legacy media play, you know, and less and less as a percentage of people's eyeballs time role in people's daily reading, how are you going to corral all so of Steve, this? So Steve, there's perception and there's reality. The okay. perception, I agree, is what you said, but it's not the reality. The legacy, the legacy media is still providing most of the basic work that the, that the digital media is taking, taking. And one of the things that's changing all, all over the place is, for instance, something that you probably haven't considered, but the, the, one of the most successful news organizations right now is the Canadian Press. They're growing like Topsy, they're hiring, hmm. and that's because Canadian Press will be doing more and more coverage of courts and legislatures, and they will be used by both legacy and by, by digital media. There, there are permutations happening out there that no one can particularly predict. The, the important thing is to stay open to them. We're, we're the news media council is also representing magazines now as well, which has never mm. happened before. And okay, here's the complaint, Francis. Uh, excuse me, Senator Lankin. I hear this because I want to be respectful no to the office. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> if I've heard this once, I've heard it a thousand times. I bet you have too, and I bet you felt this way when you were an elected official. Sixty-point headline type, front page, every newspaper when they want to blast it out there the first time, and if there's a mistake in there that they're forced to apologize for. Tiny little type buried deep in the paper somewhere else that nobody ever reads. How do you get around the unfairness of that? Well, I guess um, depending on the, the nature of the case, um, you know, the same way anyone else does, you look for some earned media. I'll give you a really good example. Uh, there were complaints that came from a number of readers of the Toronto Star and the Globe and Mail about the coverage of um, our late mayor, uh, Rob Ford mm -hmm. in, in Toronto and uh, some of the issues surrounding the video and you know I won't go through all of those details. Uh, we actually we televised uh, you know the hearings on that. Um, we put it online so people could actually see and stream um, you know the video. Uh, we Sorry your in-house hearings on this stuff? Which yes. Hearing? You yes. did? Yes. You yes. put yeah. that out there? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think Jay Source was involved in, in helping us uh, do that. Um, and the, the decision, as, as you know, was, was published, and I don't think either paper buried it. I think because of the import, it was about issues of, of um, what's in the public interest, uh, you know, how, how and when is it appropriate to use uh, uh, anonymous sources. Uh, what were the Fords in the two different cases, because one was the Ford family and the other was, was uh, Rob Ford himself, were they afforded an opportunity to respond, you know, notice of, of what was being printed and to respond? There were some really big issues in that. And it generated some media coverage of that. But in general, you're right, and I don't know that we've got a good answer uh, for how to do that, except if we're able, through this consolidated organization, and to create a presence along, as we try to work with online media, of what the National News Media Council is. We post all of our decisions on the website. There's a, you know, an, an opportunity to people to go back and look at precedent the cases that are, have been uh, decided on. And uh, right now, I don't think that's used a lot, but I'm hoping over time that we will be able to reach out and create a sense of presence that's, that's, that's where people and, go. And Steve, with equal respect, even though you're not in the Senate, um, I don't actually agree <laughs> with the premise that a, a huge headline doesn't, doesn't get a dis gets a disproportionate retraction. Any story that's that big, if it, it gets reversed, it gets the same treatment. Look at the, the Duffy trial, whatever you think of, of what the judge said. The, the, it, was, it was as front page as anything uh, that Mr. Duffy was accused of. Um, I think that's also true of any big story, even, even social scandals, uh, like the, the thing that's entertaining everyone at the moment, the McCain, um, whatever that business is that's front page, but yeah. both sides now seem to have a front page of any paper they want. But that usually is played up, and newspapers usually deal with that quite effectively. It's, that's not the problem. The problem that we deal with are much smaller things. Yeah. It's the same thing I Individual. noticed when I was there Saturday night. It's not, it's not politicians or famous people that get upset about things. They're so used to it. It's ordinary people who are caught out in the media, mm -hmm. and they see their whole persona sort of under attack, and they're the ones particularly that, that, that a, a press council is, is a perfect place for. So let's finish up on this then. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you will have achieved your mission if what? If um, the National News Media Council has and retains um, membership support from all of the newspapers across the country, if we are able to bring together with those in the digital industry that are interested in developing online standards to work with them to help them do that and bring them in 
to move to news magazines. Um, we have a sustainable organization that can give credible judgments. And the, the public and the industry have trust that is a place to go to resolve complaints in an effective way. Then we will have been successful. Understood, and good luck. Master okay. Fraser, Senator Lankin, great to have you both at TVO tonight. Mr. Stevie. <laughs> Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit supporttvo.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.